you know, there's a lot that goes in the world, goes on in the world that I'd love to get involved in. You know, there's politics, and right now this year is a massive amount of energy being used up by people to argue different sides of the coin about what their perspective is and how they feel about a certain president or candidate, certain party, certain rights. And they're very wound up by that, you know, and I'd love to get involved in those kind of things. And there are other people that have a passion for their animals, you know, they care about their, their cat or their dog or they, they love exotic animals so they're into the latest panda or Siberian tiger. They, I remember watching Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom and, you know, I'll admit it, you know, it was pretty exciting watching Hannah, I think it was the name, and watching all these things happen, you know, and learning a lot about animals. You know, and I'd love to get involved in that, you know. There's huge movement going on, you know, like in Calvary Chapel, you know, and ooh, ah, you know. I come from the early days, so I'd love to go to Bible college and get all the credentials and go be a pastor, you know, and get caught up in the religious thing, you know, and go do, ooh, yeah, yeah, the worship teams and all this other stuff. But I can't. You know, there's a lot of things going on in the world that I'd love to spend time with, you know. I'd love to be one of the greatest dancers in the world, <laughs> and I'm not. I'd love to go back to Alaska, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. I'd love to visit Israel sometime again, you know, but I don't think since I live there I'm going to go back. You know, I'd love to go on a cruise like the new Christian cruises. Ooh! You know, and lay back and be taken care of while I Bible study and play and fellowship. I don't think it's going to happen. You know, there's a lot of things I really wish I could get away with and I could do. And sometimes I try to do them anyways, you know. I still run down every once in a while to Pismo Beach to go dancing and camping out on the beach. Sometimes I run to Oregon to go hiking in some of the trails and find some hot springs and soak. Sometimes I just stay home, you know, and enjoy time with my wife. Although, I think we do more television watching than spending time with each other, just like you. But the reality of what God wanted for me has always been determined long before I was born. What he did in my life was that he took a man who was dying and gave him a life that he didn't deserve to have because I was predicted to die before I was 30. And all that time, God prepared me for a purpose and a design that I had no choice in the matter whatsoever. Now, people can say they have a freedom of choice, but the reality is God determines before the foundations of the world the direction that you should go. And that whether you know it or not, you already have been preordained to accomplish something in your life. Now, that may be good works. You may accomplish something magnificent for God. Or you may just simply do one little thing that God may record it in his last book of life. But the most important thing that I've found in my life is to have the urgency in the heart that like here in this devotional on my utmost says that Paul's whole heart and mind and soul were taken up with the great matter of what Jesus Christ came to do and he never lost sight of that one thing. What did Jesus come to do? Save the world from sin? Well, yeah, sort of. You know, I mean, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He said, I come not to condemn the world, but that the world through me might find salvation. But he also revealed the Father, and he revealed the love that the Father had for his creation, for his people for the opportunity for those that would discover Jesus in a personal relationship and be saved from a salvation, be saved, literally, have a salvation that would prevent them from going to a place that was determined for the angels that rebelled against God and Satan. And that would be hell, as it will be cast into the lake of fire. That someday there's going to come a time where, sadly, you will stand 
either at the great white throne of judgment or the judgment seat of Christ. And if he decides that you are not one of his, you'll go to hell. Bluntly. So the most important thing that Paul was about was always on a regular basis driving home the point that salvation has come and there is a way and an opportunity for you to know Jesus in a personal and intimate way that you would cause him to be born again, not of the flesh, but of the spirit, not a religious thing. Paul was a Pharisee. He knew what religion was. He did not bring a new religion. He did not bring an old religion. He brought Jesus Christ and him crucified and that would solve the world's issues. That would determine the ability of those who did not know God to know God. So at times, I think, people get the wrong idea about what God has in store for them. I think they need to take a second look. I think they need to examine where they're coming from and what they're doing in light of the eternal crush of things. I am made all things to all men that by any means some might be saved. From 1 Corinthians 9.22. A Christian worker has to learn how to be God's noble man or woman amid a crowd of ignoble things. Never make this plea, if only I were somewhere else. All God's men were ordinary men, made extraordinary by the matter he has given them, whatsoever it was, whatsoever they did. He brought in the extra. You were just available to be the tool. Unless we have the right matter in our minds, intellectually, and in our hearts, affectionately, we will be hustled out of usefulness for God. In other words, we have to have our heart and our mind put together in right relationship with God or else we're just doing our own thing. We're creating a religion again. And that's already been done, it's been tried. How many times have you heard that? This is a famous one. Oh, if only the Christians were more like Jesus, or if only Christians would do like Jesus said. Or, have you seen those Mormons? They're more Christian than Christians are. Or the Quakers, or some other denomination, or some other cult, or some other religion. But that's not what it's about, you see, because your heart and your mind has to unify in a right relationship with God so that you would not just do the right thing, you would know the right person. Paul's whole heart and mind were taken up with the great matter of what Jesus Christ came to do, and he never lost sight of that one thing. We have to face ourselves with one central fact, Jesus Christ and him crucified. He died that I might live. And when I was ready to die, I had already been saved. I was saved because I went to a concert where I saw people that were in love with each other. Literally. I went to a concert and I didn't get this giant salvation message in. You know, I didn't feel real guilty about my sins because, frankly, I didn't think I'd committed any sin. I was a good kid, you know, and I didn't know what sin was. And even after Greg Glory told me what sin was, I didn't feel like I was one of them. You know, I mean, I kind of felt like, I, hey, I was a good guy. But I saw in those people around me, they had something I didn't have. And I had an emptiness that I knew that they had what I wanted to fill that emptiness with. And that bottom line was love. It was love from God that filled their lives, that caused them to shine and to glow in such a way that I wanted to know what it was. I wanted to have it and I wanted to be in a part of it. I didn't care how, whatever it took, I wanted it. And you know, I didn't know any fancy formulas because when they did it with me, they laid hands on me. They prayed for me more than anything else. I mean, they said repeat after me, and I, you know, I kind of, whatever it was, you know, at the time, can't even remember. But God invaded me at that moment because he did it. And that's what the point is. Jesus Christ and him crucified is all you need to share. Jesus did it, you tell someone and they'll get saved. That's all it is. It's nothing complicated. It's not weirdo. It's not wacko. You don't have to get four spiritual laws and get so holy about it that they're confused. They just need to know that they want God. And when they want God, God will meet them because God loves them. Because your Father in Heaven gave His Son to die so that they would know Him. 
And what are we doing about that? Are we so caught up in prosperity doctrines? Are we so lost in barkings and worship that we don't bring back the joy of the Lord in just being able to share Jesus in a simple way? To just being able to take the fun, the peace, the love, the joy out on the streets. Huh. To find the lonely and the broken hearted like me. It just wanted to be loved. And then God will take over. I have chosen you. Keep that note of greatness in your creed. It is not that you have got God, but that he has got you. You are the one. You are the one that makes a difference in your home. You are the one that makes a difference in your job. You are the one that makes a difference in your life. Everywhere you go and everything you do, you are the light of the world. Now you may be a flickering candle in the wind. You may be a bright spotlight. Who knows? You may be a neon and you may be a freon, but who knows? Some kind of neon, you know, ought to get bright because guess what? It's time that the light shines in the darkness. And we need to shine what it is that God brought to us. And that's love, not condemnation. God did not come to condemn the world. God has already condemned it. God came to save it. It's heading for judgment. It's not heading to be condemned. It's already been there. It was determined that from the moment that Adam sinned. It is not that you have got God, but God has got you. God is at work bending, breaking, molding, and doing just as he chooses with you, how he chooses, the way he chooses, and you do not have your rights to yourself, as you think you do. For God called you, God chose you, God determined that you should bring forth good works unto his name's sake, for his glory and not your own. For the ministry was never about you, but it was about Jesus who died for you and for all those around you. Because once you're saved, you were meant to bring others to him, that they too might be saved. Why is he doing it? We do not know, except that God chose you, and that's enough. He is doing it for one purpose only, that he may be able to say, this is my man and my woman. I have chosen them. I have put my spirit in them. I have given them my life. I have laid down my law. I have placed in their heart a new love, a joy, and a peace. And I have caused the fruits of the spirit to be manifested in their life, that they should no longer live after themselves, but live after me. For this is my will in Christ Jesus, that those who are called by my name should come to salvation, that none should perish, but all should come to the realization of Jesus Christ in their life, in their love, in their home, in their hearts, and in every place that God has placed them, it's peculiarly a people unto himself. We have to be put in God's hands so that he can plant men on the rock as he has planted us. For that is where you take your stand, is in the hand of God. Never choose to be a worker, but when God has put his call on you, woe to be you if you turn to the right or to the left and not do the thing that God has told you to do, which is the salvation of souls. He will do with you what he never did with you before the call came. He will do with you what he is not doing with other people. He will make you into the image of his only begotten son. Because you will be his representative. And he will accomplish his purposes in you. There is only one way to live. And that's to die. Because if you try to live your own life in any other way except dying to self, you're going to fail miserably. It may take you the end of your marriage, the end of your ministry, the end of anything else that you've gotten involved in in your religious observation of being a Christian. But until you find that realization of living as a Christian, as living as God's personal witness, as being the Son of God, alive and well and living in you to minister to all the others around you, you're going to fail. 
but you're going to try so many things until you do. But when you find that the joy of the Lord is finding the salvation of those souls that are lost, that need to be saved, then God forbid that you should turn to the left or the right and do any other thing except the salvation of souls to bring them to Jesus. God help you if you do anything less, or God help you if you do anything more. But save the souls that are lost. Save those people and tell them about Jesus, where you are today, as you are today, everywhere that you go. Just let them know that God loves them and that you have something that they don't have. You have Jesus in you.